Palfrey, and all of these luminaries in lineage in the Prisca theology uh, uh, tradition that we have, nonetheless, the Iron Age would not tolerate the symbols. So we've had to wait for a long, long time to be able to uh, understand these symbols. And now you and I are the beneficiaries because since the time of Champollion, we understand the uh, hieroglyphs. <clears throat> T. Um, well, my wife's Japanese and she makes me beautiful uh, filter. Water, so I'm not drinking fluoride. Um, and I have green tea. I have various kinds of tea that I get from my acupuncturist chamomile and stuff like that. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo both revealed to us that they drank uh, woo and that they ascribed uh, that the virtues in the, is in the woo tea uh, to their genius. In fact, they they um, have revealed in their works about how important Rue is for the mind and for stimulating the mind. Repeat uh, the question. Oh, you lost me. Okay. Uh, am I good now? Am I still audible? Okay. I'll go again then. Yeah, okay. Um, about I was asked about E. Um, so what is my preferred tea? I go with chamomiles and... Uh, and and uh, peppermint and stuff like that. Um, Japanese green, a bit of lemon juice in there. Yeah, so I'm... Mm. Um, for uh, understanding the uh, personalities of the Zodiac, uh, I would be reading the Thomas Burgoyne books that I've already recommended. But um, this is a gem. This is a gem. This book is absolutely magnificent. It's dealing with, as I said before, the Gospel of Mark, which I'm going to expose in my uh, presentation at the weekend. Uh, this this um, Reverend Bill Darlison, he uh, has proven in this book that the Gospel of Mark begins in Aries, and uh, finishes with Pisces, as opposed to the Gospel of Matthew and Luke, which begin with the Nativity and uh, on the solstice. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ruth. And um, this book is great too because you've got astrotheology and astrology. This reveals a lot about your personality and how your personality is affected by your uh, It's just probably the, the one of the most all-round books on the subject because it ties them all together like I do. Astrology, astrotheology, as above, so below. He, he's doing pretty much that, and he's a reverend. Okay, the significance of the number 47... Um, well, we've got 1947, a very important year, um, and, of course, what happened there was the Isles was found, the CIA was founded, we have the UFO um, phenomena began. Uh, but as for the number 47, now, Right now, at the moment, I just can't think. But yes, there is. 47 is big. Yeah, 47. Um, yeah, that's a good point. 23.5 degrees times 2. Um, yeah, from the, the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn, yeah, which describes the obliquity of the ecliptic. Um, the obliquity of the ecliptic is the cycle 
which um, which defines the um, the obliquity of the ecliptic. So, uh, and 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 that cycle lasts two million one hundred and sixty thousand years, and it has to do with the tilt of the Earth. The axis it is um, migrating 360 degrees every two million years. In fact, every two million, I'll put the figure up: two million one hundred and sixty thousand years. Now that two one six zero appears everywhere. It's the, yeah, it's everywhere, exactly, Big John. Is that correct, Big John? Can I call you that? Because I see your comments are up quite a bit, so I'll <laughs> refer to you. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's the um, circumference of the moon. It has measurements to the earth. It has to do with the platonic year, uh, you know, the platonic month being 2,160 years long. Okay, so you can find it everywhere and um, that is how long it takes for the axis of the earth to go around so as Emmanuel Velikovsky predicted 60 years ago is we are starting the earth is going to start shape violently and the tilt of the earth is just going to be nudged nudged and it's going to be nudged towards toward zero degrees and it's, we're going to, the obliquity of the ecliptic, so that 47 degrees from Cancer to Capricorn is going to be squeezed and squeezed, and that sine wave is going to roll out. And we're going to have, for a short period of time, we're going to have a one season year. And we go back to the rule of Saturn. You see, Saturn rules the golden age. And then Jupiter rules the ages of friction. Jupiter he rules the periods when the tilt... You see, Jupiter is ruling right now. Um, you see, until until such time as the tilt moves and we recalibrate the heavens, we don't know who the ruler is. But Jupiter has been the ruler for a long time. In other words, Jupiter is in our solar system. He took that job away from his father, Kronos. And that happened when the when we fell out of the, old, the golden age. Uh, yes, in the next period of time, probably, according to Emmanuel Velikovsky, the Earth will shake, and the prophecies do talk about this time. The, the Earth and and and, the, and says in beautiful poetic, poetic language that the God of heavens will rock the um, the uh, footstool and the posts of the heavens and the Earth. The Earth will shake and and tremor and tremble. Um. How would you go about building your birth chart if your birth time is not on your birth receipt? That's a problem. Because um, in order to, to establish your ascendant, which is the um, one of the vital parts of the Trinity, and that is, is the other parts, sun sign and the moon sign, the ascendant is so very important because it marks the sign that is rising in the east at the moment you are born. So, for instance, if you are born at sunset, the sun will be over there in the west, but your ascendant will be in the east. So let's say, for example, you are a Libra, your ascendant will be Aries, right? Um, now, so this is why it's, in, it's important to know the time when you were born because then you can establish that. And in establishing that, then you can establish the houses. Because the first house, which deals with you personally in your life, will be the sign that comes up in the next two hours from the horizon ascending, rising. And then after that will be the second house. And that's off. And your prosperity. And your riches. Because... Those signs correspond to Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. You see, Aries is dealing with me, I am, so that's the first house. Taurus is dealing with I have, so it symbolizes the second house. But the houses always go, start from the horizon, the ascendant, 
and go downwards. They don't go upwards like Aries does to meet answer. It goes the other way because the sign has to ascend in order to be the first house. And then the second sign is ascending in order to be the second house. You see, there's a lot of confusion there. I find people don't understand the house for that reason. Okay, I need back a bit. Back a ways to get some um, questions that I missed. Um, the numbers 2,160,000 are always at Add to the number nine, yes, they do. I didn't really think about that, but there you go, you see. That's why we need each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What else have I missed? So how would you go about building your birth chart? Okay, seatbelts. I don't see the question anymore. Just keep disappearing. Sorry. Uh, Seatbelts. Where the hell is that? Oh, that's the purple one. Okay, that's Patricia. Sorry, Patricia. Okay, seatbelts. Uh, Seatbelts. <laughs> seatbelts. Okay, so that's not a question. Um, yeah, yeah, put the seatbelts on. The earth's going to start shaking. Next question. Uh, you need to tell me more, Patricia. The importance of the holy science in the next few years. Oh, look, it's indispensable, guys. It's all there is. Know thyself is the answer, isn't it? Really. Because um, know thyself holds the divinities, um, the divinities that we are. Know, thy, know thyself by discovering that you're pretty good. You're pretty good. We are... Very good, in fact. Yes, we have virtues. Yes, we have unpleasant things that need to be uh, deactivated and powers that need to be activated. Um, dominion, yeah, dominion and sovereignty. That's the word, Big John, spot on. Um, and, of course, remember the magic word of the Gospels. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The three active words there are no, truth, and free. We are knowing truth that is free. The other knowledge that enslaves, that's the church consensus Jesus knowledge. That's the one that says, you know, the Jehovah's Witness that comes knocking to your door on your door and says, Oh, we want to teach you to God, because you need to know God in order to be saved at Armageddon. Yeah. You need to know their God, their truth, about their fictional God that they've created in order to to join their club. That knowledge is the same kind of knowledge as the as mankind knew about the flat earth 600 years ago, you know. You've got to remember 600 years ago, we knew that the earth was flat. How handy was that knowledge? You see, ignorance, ignorance is the worst kind of disease in the universe. And the people who love it, are the ones to be feared. They are the ones to be feared. They will kill you. Them, the God that made us, are the one God, even though they believe in a different God, and we know a different God. It's the same God, right? It's the Creator. It's the de the the Deus. Ah, yeah, knowing, not believing. Exactly, guys, knowing and not believing. As I said before, Rome, um, you know, atheists in the sense of people who are so void of spirituality and have no divinity or no suspicion of their divinity and believers, one or the other, and either one are not acceptable to the divinity. They're not acceptable to ascension because you will not progress. Progression in the knowing. And not knowing for the sake of knowing. It's knowing for the sake of becoming. 